This is Twit. What are the things, what are the, the metrics, the measurables that you get, that you analyze, that point towards fraud? So, I mean, of course, it's going to change. It's always going to change. This is a cat and a mouse game. But, but let's get theoretical here for a second. Yeah. If I'm a fraudster, what are the things that I'm doing that you're going to start to be able to detect? Yeah, so there's a few things. So, you know, when you, when you come to um, a carrier's um, uh, store, online channel, etc., you're going to have to provide a certain amount of information. You'll provide information around who you are, name, address, um, if you're a house owner, depending on the part of the world you're in, you know, if you're um, employed, unemployed, how long you've been resident in a particular address, and maybe some bank details. So there's that's yeah, kind of a one set of inf application information. Then there's another set of inf information we get. It's like, okay, where, what type of uh, phone are you buying? What type of plan are you trying to acquire? Uh, where are you trying to acquire? Are you acquiring it through a carrier store? Uh, and then what about the agents in the store? Um, who are you dealing with in that store, et cetera? And the same information for third parties. So we're actually taking in all that information. And what we actually find is that you will find patterns around the information that's been provided um, by fraudsters that will kind of, a, it's a tell. Uh, and, and that's the tell that we're looking for in the big data. We also combine that information with uh, CDR data. So, you know, if we see a number that someone's trying to um, port in, we will um, look at, in some parts of the world, we'll look at the history of calls related to that number. And you know, there's a little bit of social network analysis going on here that allows us to um, kind of infer whether um, that particular user might actually have uh, been in contact or the types of folks that they're um, calling, receiving calls from, et cetera, on a regular basis, may be, we'll say, less credit worthy than other parts. And you know, there are restrictions in certain parts of the world, you can do this kind of profiling and others not. And obviously that's one of the things you have to take into account. But it's this information is um, what we actually apply to uh, a number of machine learning algorithms. And that, again, it's we can pick out from that data, uh, both the, the what we call the features, which is the information we get, and then a series of synthetic features, which is kind of features that we derive from that basic information that we're getting from the carrier and their back end, and their um, customer system. That's what allows us to actually detect fraud and be able to give them, and it's, 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 a, it's a score, right? I mean, you can never say 100% that this person's a fraudster, but what you're telling them is that we think there's a high probability that there is a, a risk of fraud is going to happen with this particular applicant um, who's trying to acquire an iPhone or a handset. And what we've seen, I mean, there's a few really interesting stuff. You'll find that fraud sometimes has a very low, is very localized. If they find a particular store um, where well, for whatever reason, those guys are um, trying to earn a lot of commission or the processes in the store or the people in the store are not very uh, diligent. They will keep going back to that store. And big data allows us to find that very quickly and actually help a carrier eliminate it.